Being an economist means we look at life from a different perspective, dwelling deep into what is seen and going further into what is not seen. All of you must have heard about the micro, macro development and international economics. When we talk about GDP, we often wonder from where does this GDP come? Without the concept of knowledge, how does GDP even grow? Why did it take so long for somebody to come and put in that little K there in between, adding so much value, making it the GDP? So let's look at what GDP is, how it affects our nation, and how it affects the global understanding of how our growth and development takes place. With one short note, I would like to say the only aspect constant in life is change. And the thing which changes on a regular basis is knowledge. With every knowledge that comes in, we look at a new growth, a new development. Knowledge creates markets and modern visionaries, which helps one to dwell into creating new wealth, the wealth formation as it's called in economics. When we talk about wealth formation, we need to understand that the only aspect which can make our wealth grow in different forms is only through right knowledge put to practice. Only having knowledge not radiating down to practice is waste, as we all know. And if we have to understand this concept of putting the application of this knowledge, we need to look at the productivity and the efficiency at what rate it is going up. Simple GDP in the 1930s was what was used. And it was actually subjugated by the economist and the politicians at that point of time. Right now, we are in an era where we have a lot of information. And this information allows us to look beyond and also understand where it is being fabricated. When a nation is looked at a production hub, why is its knowledge not taken into consideration? Why is that value of knowledge being associated to that production not given its due credit to that particular country? India ranks really low with its GDP and China ranking just near it only in production. What about the knowledge quotient? Is India not the knowledge hub of the world? Why is the knowledge bring tank of India, the think tank of India, moving out of the country and producing goods and services in other countries, raising their GDP? There is something to ponder for all of us. The K factor needs to be assisted, needs to be supported, needs to be guided and put to practice so that our GDP is a reflection of our GDK. Coming again to the aspect of the standard of living, which comes in very closely to the GDP, I would like to bring everybody's knowledge to understanding that would you like to be assessed the way you are right now even after 30 years? Even after 40 years, would you like to be assessed in the same way? Then why is the production of a country being assessed in the same way? There is growth, there is information, there is wealth creation. And when this is the whole process, it's an ongoing churning process, why is it that it is not taken into consideration? And I would right, rightly and very honestly say that if it was not IMS here today, I guess there would definitely be some other country would stand up and some other institution would stand up to claim that they have been the first organization, the first institution to have brought up the concept of GDKB as a mode of discussion. So I would really like to appreciate Manchuji for having thought about this aspect. The knowledge quotient of our youth grows to such an extent that India becomes the next leader. I would ask one question, why next leader? Are we not leaders right now? The big bridge which needs to be cracked and which has to be created into a new form takes the voice of the youth, takes the actions of the youth, and takes the integrity, dedication, and the sincerity of the institutions like IMS. It is setting an example that all the institutions across the world need to understand that knowledge quotient is coming as number one. It's the apex, it's the peak. From there radiates the evaluation, the application, and the various aspects of increasing the efficiency, productivity, and allowing the human rights to be voiced in the right way. Imagine your knowledge being plagiarized and patented in another country, raising their GDP. Are you ready for that? You can definitely take guidance from people who have been experienced, but the action lies in you. Students, on this note, I would like to leave you with an example 
in your thought stating that after 30 years you will still see India as a developing economy or do you want to see it as a developed economy? Ask yourself, that is the question for you. Thank you so much once again.